find yourself in an unfamiliar house, fighting against time with your only weapon being your mind. You will need to rely on your eyes because the key to your successful escape is to find a list of specific items hidden throughout the house and make your way to the exit. And keeping that in mind, hey, hey everybody, what's up and welcome back to Macabre Gorium Labs presents School of Boredom, a showcase of things likely forgotten, Nickelodeon edition. My name is Bats and I'm here today to talk about one of the first Nickelodeon shows that started it all with lesson N-104, Finders Keepers, Inside the House. And straight ahead, find the kind of action that rips up rooms on Finders Keepers. <laughs> On November 2nd, 1987, Nickelodeon premiered a new game show for kids called Finders Keepers. The original show had Wesley Ure as host and John Harvey as announcer. You might remember John Harvey from our Nickelodeon N-103 Double Dare lesson, as he was the announcer on that show too. Ultimately, John Harvey was replaced by Bob Lohman and then by Joe Conklin. New episodes of Finders Keepers aired on Nickelodeon until July 29, 1988. On September 12, 1988, a first-run syndicated version was distributed by Fox television stations and Viacom. For this lesson, a syndicated show is simply a show that is shown on a different TV network than the original premiere. The syndicated version was hosted by Larry Toffler with Harry Stevens as the announcer, and the music for Finders Keepers was written by Ed Kalehoff. Ed Kalehoff is a TV composer that also wrote music for Double Dare, in addition to many other game shows. That's right, Goat, but there is one similarity to Double Dare I think you're forgetting. No, Bats, I don't think so. I think I told it all. Nope. Goats, you've forgotten that the first two seasons of Finders Keepers were filmed at the WHYY TV studios in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Oh yeah, I did forget about that. But I also need to add that the syndicated version was taped at the Hollywood Center Studios in Los Angeles, California. And I'm glad you brought that up because it is an important piece of information. However, let's wrap up the history portion of this lesson with the following fact. The syndicated series lasted until March 10th, 1989, but Nickelodeon started showing reruns on March 13th, 1989, and this would continue until August 25th of 1990. Okay, I have one last history fact before we move on. Nick Gass re-aired the series from 1999 until 2006, but don't worry, we will have a lesson or a quickie about this Nick gem as well, so check out that. Now let's get into the fun part of this lesson with how you actually play this game. The sets for the original Nickelodeon version had a fake outside of a house that had a door that the host Wesley Yur would enter at the start of each episode. This house set would then open to reveal the inside of the house and the rooms that the teams would be looking through. However, in the syndicated version, the play area and the house would share the same set. The main core of the game has two rounds, consisting of the first round where kids would have to find hidden objects in a drawing, and the second round had the kids tearing apart a room in the house set. The game starts with two teams of two kids being shown a drawing with hidden objects in it. The host gives out clues to the team so they can try to figure out what object they need to find. The team that found the correct object would earn $25 for their team, but also included a chance to search one of the four rooms from the first round. In the beginning of the original version, kids were able to pick which rooms to search but this was later changed so that each item found in the picture would give the chance to search a specific room. In the first round, each picture had at most six objects to find. The round would go on until all four rooms had been searched or all six clues had been given. Next, the teams would search the house, which had eight rooms. Some of the rooms were normal, such as bathroom, bedroom, and living room but some were fantasy rooms, like Alibaba's bathroom or Tarzan's treehouse. The host would read the clue that would pertain to an object hidden in the room. 
This sounded easy, but it was actually quite difficult. A team would have 30 seconds to figure out what the object was and then locate it within the rooms. However, the rooms also had other things lying about meant to distract the kids such as ping pong balls in cabinets, sprays of water, and shells falling down, just to name a few. Then, to top it all off, finding the object was made even harder as the team only had one chance to show the correct item to the host. If the team didn't find the correct item or showed the host an incorrect item, then the opposing team got the $50 for that round. Enter Round 2. Round 2 starts the same as Round 1 with a drawing and finding the hidden pictures. However, the team now gets $75 for finding the correct item in the drawing and $100 for finding an object in the house. In Round 2, there was also an instant prize room. When a team chose what room to search, a bell would go off and lights would flash to let the team know they chose the room. In this room, if the team located the correct hidden object, they would win the $100, but also they would win an additional prize. The team that has won the most money continues on to the final round, Room to Room Romp. The other team will get to take home all of the money that they previously won, as well as some consolation prizes such as toys or games. Sometimes on the show, teams would actually end up with the same amount of money, and so, to break a tie, the teams would play a quicker version of the Finding Hidden Objects game, and the winner would be the first one that could find two of the hidden items. Hold it right there. We'll be right back. If these were your clothes, or if this were your room, boy, would you be in trouble. But not on Finders Keepers. Take a look at it. This is Nick Territory, so as long as you're a kid, you can do anything you want. Find it! Like shred Sherlock's study, dig up the beach, even sweat it out in the swamp. There's a lot of places you can look. At Finders Keepers, you get it so comfy, even kid stars can't stay away. So if you want to mess around, check out Finders Keepers, weekdays at 6, 5 Central, on the only network for you, Nickelodeon. Shameless plug! Hey everybody, if you're enjoying the video, please click like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can see all of our weird, creepy, odd, strange, or eccentric content as soon as we get it out to you. Now without further ado, back to your video. Nickelodeon presents Great Moments in Chaos. March 4th, 1911. Laboratory experiments revealed that if man were meant to fly, he would use devices that look more like planes. On November 2nd, 1987, Nickelodeon unveiled the next Great Moment in Chaos, a new game show called Finders Keepers. Be there every weekday at precisely 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock Central, for history in the making. Finders Keepers on Nickelodeon. You're headed straight for... More Nick. The Room to Room Romp Finale The Room to Room Romp Finale gave the winning team 90 seconds to search six rooms in a specific order that the teams are given before they begin. Each room contains one item that has a tag attached. The tags told the kids which room to go to next and also would give them a clue on how to find the next hidden object. Much like Double Dare, there was a prize to win for each room and one grand prize if the team managed to find all six objects within the time limit. Surprisingly, our research uncovered that although there were prizes won for each round, that although there were prizes won for each round, prizes for the Room to Room Romp round and grand prize are things we were not able to find any information on as to what these actually were. And with that, we've come to the end of the video. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but we hope you enjoyed this moderately in-depth look at one of Nickelodeon's pioneer game shows. I've been your host, Bats, and this has been the Macabgorium Lab School of Boredom Nickelodeon Edition Lesson N-104, Finders Keepers Inside the House. Be sure to check back next time. You never know what we have in store. And as usual, think for yourselves, be excellent to each other, and keep it creepy. Hey, thanks for checking out our video. If you enjoyed this one and would like to see more of our weird, creepy, odd, eccentric, or strange content as soon as it comes out, please feel free to click like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more. We'll see you later. Keep it creepy.